We are Israel united in Christ. We came out here to teach you so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans. You are the children of God. That's you right. are the Israelites according to the Bible. That's right. Hey, bro, what's up, man? What's your name? Huh? I can't hear you, bro. Come here. All right, I'm Zeph. Zeph and I, good to meet you, bro. So, you you know what we teach? So, you believe it? So, uh, let me ask you a question. What's your nationality? Huh? You're an Israelite, yeah. yeah. Right. From the tribe of Judah. Because uh, your, your daddy, he's so-called African-American, right? All right, so I'm going to go in the Bible and prove how... How we know uh, your nationality come from your father? Give me that in numbers. Cause uh, the fake, the fake Jew, the fake Jews, the Jewish, the white people, they say they the Israelites, but God say they not in the Bible. They say your nationality come from your mama. So a lot of our people run around thinking that. But we gotta go out with the Bible, so we can't go out what we think. Right, that's right. Read what you got. The book of Numbers, chapter 1, verse 18. Yeah. And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. So God said we assembled, we congregated, everybody came together on the, on the first day of the seventh month. Read. And they declared their pedigree. And we declared our pedigree. Our pedigree, you know what a pedigree is? You ever met some bulls? Yeah, they bloodline. You know how they look at them? Like, this a red nose, this a blue pig, this whatever. That's they that's our pedigree. So God said our bloodline, our lineage, it comes, it came from where? And they declared their pedigrees after their families by the house of their fathers. So the, our tribe, our lineage, it came from our, the house of our father. Right. So if your if your daddy from Judah, but your mama from Issachar, you still a Judite, cause because God because God set that up by your by your daddy, by your father. Finish that out. According to the number of their names, from 20 years up, old and upward by their pose. So, so give me um, Deuteronomy 28. So now we're gonna go into the Bible and get a get a little a quick history lesson on how we know we're the children of Israel. Matter of fact, give me hold. Uh, we're gonna get Deuteronomy 28. Give me Revelation 2 and 9. Cause I made a statement. I was like, it's a, it's a people, it's a group of people on the earth that call themselves the Jews, but God said they not the Jews in the Bible. They tried to steal our lineage when we went into um we went into slavery. We couldn't read, we couldn't write. They tried to take our nationality. They tried to say they was the uh, children of God. Read what you got. Revelation chapter two verse nine. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Read it again from the top. I know thy works and tribulation. So God said he know how hard we work. Because in, in this in this slavery, in this captivity, we gotta we built up this nation. All the buildings and stuff you see around here, the people on them signs, we work to build up this stuff, but we don't get to reap the benefits of none of this stuff. So God said he know how hard we work. We go to them nine to fives, 12 hour shifts, all those all those type of stuff. Back break, back break and work just to make a few dollars. God said he know how hard we work. Free and poverty. But not tri tribulation. And and tribulation. God said he know our tribulations. The stuff we go through. The stuff that the sub the systematic oppression we go through. How Willie Lynch set up a system hundreds of years ago to make us look at each other to where we hate each other. But we popular we popularize it. Uh dark skin versus light skin, young versus old, red versus blue. They put all those walls up in between our people to keep us separated so we wouldn't come back to be being the twelve tribes of Israel. That's right. African American, Jamaican, Haitian, uh Mexican. Cause anybody I ever meet, talking to them, we start talking about what happened to school happened to us in school. This brother from Ohio, he said the same thing. Brother back there, he from Detroit. He said the same thing. When we was in school, we all Mexicans and blacks. They always fall. Why? Why did it? Why did that stuff happen? That's that Willie Lynch. They they put they put us against each other because they know that in God's eyes we brothers. But this system is set up for us to be on the bottom fighting each other for crumbs while the other nations ruling over us. But God made them to be our servants. Right. That's 
That's right. But when we went into uh, sin, we started breaking God's commandments. That's why we on the bottom. That's why we live in the hood. That's why we live in the ghetto. Read it again. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty. And God said we impoverished. We poor. We live paycheck to paycheck. Housing. Section 8. You know what I'm saying? So we got to devise. We got to devise ways that God never intended us to use to try to make a couple dollars. Just to come up in this society. Right. And those fake Jews that he talking about right here, they popularize it in music, in movies. They pay our own people to act a certain way, but in real life, they don't really live like that. Like Young Jeezy, he dropped about five albums talking straight about dope, but what did he tell his son? Hey son, you go to college. They actors, they pay, they, pay, they pay them to act a certain way for us to look at it like, hey, I got The way I gotta get that money, I gotta act like Jeezy. But in real life, they don't act like that. They act like the white man. They try to. They trying to live sophisticated. They trying to teach they, they children uh, the ways of the white man. But right. this the true knowledge right here. Right. That's, that's, right. that's not real knowledge. Real knowledge is in the Bible. That's right. We, but thou art rich. But God said we impoverished, but we rich. How can that be? How can you be poor but rich at the same time? Teach y'all. Because God talking about. Monetarily, money-wise, in, in the things of the earth, we poor. We poor in spirit because we ain't got these commandments. Right. But God said we rich because all these blessings in this Bible belong to us. That's right. All Revelations um, and Deuteronomy get uh, Romans 9. I'm going to show you how God say we rich spiritually. We the richest people ever. We that's only, right. Because this Bible is only rich to us. That's it ain't right. for everybody else. So that's and that's why they look at our people and treat us a certain way. That's why the real Africans, when they come from Africa and get us stolen in our neighborhoods, they don't mess with us because they know we the children of God. They don't want to sold us to the white man. That's right. All other nations besides those people on their side, they hate us genetically. God created them that way. That's right. Read? Romans chapter nine verse four. Bring it this, out. This is how we rich. Hey, y'all sisters, we out here teaching the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans with the Israelites according to the Bible. That's right. We got to repent and keep God's commandments. That's, right. That's the only way we're going to get the kingdom of heaven. Read. Who are Israelites? To who pertained the adoption? So the adoption, Christ dying on the cross, that only pertained to the Israelites. That's Christ right. did not come and die for everybody. Right. Because you know who killed Christ? Yeah, the Romans. Right. The Romans killed Christ. Some of our people delivered them to them, but the Romans had to get a final judgment because it's like today. We can't go to no courthouse and be like, hey, this brother deserved death. We don't got that power. So in that time, we were slaves too. We didn't have that power. The Romans set that up. They 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 gave the final uh, okay for Christ to be put to death. Right. So, so the people that put him to death, when he come back, it's a judgment for that. He ain't coming. What he coming to save them for when they rule them? They is the world power, right? And, and the glory. And the glory in this Bible belongs to us. That's the kingdom of heaven. It's only for the Israelites. Right. Read. And the covenants. And the covenants. That's plural. Old and new. Because they try to say the New Testament, the Christ came and died, uh, John 3.16. The world in the Bible is Israel. That's right. Because uh, the world, world got more than one definition. When you go into uh, Sea World, is that talking about uh, sports? No, when you go into the sports world, is that talking about movies? No. So it's different definitions in the word world. World means a common group of people having uh, common aims, interests, or goals. They got one mind frame. So that's that's a world. In the Bible, that's Israel. That's, that's the world right. to God. Right? That's right. And the giving of the law. And God gave the law only to the Israelites. Read. And the service of God. And the promises. And we the servants of God and the promises. Every promise in this Bible is only for the 12 tribes of Israel. That's, That's right. right. Read. Right. No. Go back to uh, Revelation 2. Revelation chapter 2 verse 9. Yep. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. We just seen how we rich because all these blessings in this Bible pertain only to us. And this, that's 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 uh, that's priceless. It's of of uh, more value than anything on this earth. That's this Bible right. right here. You might, cause in society they might just say it's just a book or it's it's a book of fairy tales or this, that, and the third. But it's prophecies all throughout this Bible. All this stuff came to pass. That's this right. stuff you see on this sign, us going into slavery. God prophesied that before it happened. That's how we know this is a true book. Don't no other book got prophecy in it. Not the Quran, 
not none of them other books, any other religious group try to uh, use and say that uh, they God gave them that. This is the right. only prophetic book on earth. That's right. right. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not. So God said he know the blasphemy. You know what a blasphemy is? It's a, a egregious, terrible lie. God said he know the lies of them who say they're the Jews, but they not. Who are they? But are the synagogue of Satan. He said they're the dwelling place, the house, or the children of Satan. That's who they are. Really? That's right. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. So, and that's how we know it's talking about a man. Because God said, don't fear the stuff that you're going to suffer. Because what's going to happen to some of these Israelites that stand up in this uh, against this systematic oppression to wake up his people? The devil shall cast some of you into prison. God said the devil going to cast you into prison. So that's a man. Because because in Christianity, they teach you it's a red uh, spiritual being in the under the, that live under the earth with a pitchfork. They say that's the devil. But God said in the Bible, the devil going to throw some of our people in prison. Let me ask you a question. Who populate prison houses? When you go to TDC, when you go to Loose Therese, who, who in there, who got the highest population in there? Huh? You said what? I'm saying not not who got the highest rank. Who who in there the most? Is it white people, Chinese? Yeah, blacks. All people in there. So he telling you said the devil. That's a man. He gonna throw some of our people in prison. Um, Isaiah chapter forty two. So God is giving you characteristics of these people. He ain't gotta just flat out and say it's gonna be a people on the earth. Who, who call themselves the white man. No, he giving you the characteristics how they going to act. He said they going to call themselves the Jews, but they not really the Jews. Right. And when y'all wake up to the knowledge that y'all the Israelites, they going to start throwing it. They going to start throwing y'all in jail. They already, it's a snowball effect right now. They already said to certain stuff up. Muslims uh, killing people and bombing stuff, and they trying to link it back to uh, what they call the Hebrew Israelites. But we are the Israelites. Ain't no Hebrew Israelites, ain't no black Hebrew Israelites. We are the Israelites according to the Bible. That's right. Three. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 22. Bring it out. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in hold. So God said we are people robbed and spoiled. They robbed us of our heritage and gave us African American, gave us black, gave us Negro, gave us color, gave us gang banging, gave us football, basketball, rapping. They robbed us of this Bible and gave us all that stuff that don't really mean nothing that's vain, right? And they are hid in prison houses. And where those snares and traps get us? In prison houses. So when we go outside of this Bible into the things of the world that God didn't ordain for us, God said we get hid in prison houses. And that's not just talking about the physical prison house. Those Christianity churches, that's a prison house. That's right. Because you locked up in that doctrine that's, that's vain to you. It don't, it don't profit you at all. They ain't teaching you what God looked like. They're not teaching you what, what Jesus Christ looked like. They're not teaching you your nationality. They ain't telling you if you, to get the kingdom of heaven, you got to repent and keep God's commandments. That's right. You know what Jesus Christ looked like? What did he look like? How you know? Where at? All right. Uh, okay, I'll pray. We're going uh, to get that right quick. Then we're going to get you some commandments that you need to start keeping to to to, uh, to, to start to take that first step in your faith. Because you've been watching. Uh, matter of fact, whole Revelation, get, uh, Romans 10. You've been watching. You've been hearing that. That's what's going to build your faith. Now you got to put it into action. That's right. Cause that's how you show God. That's how we show God we believe. Cause these brothers right here, we started out watching and hearing, but when we, we was God put it on our spirit to take that next step, and that next step is starting to apply the commandments to our life. That's right. Romans ten and seventeen. Romans chapter ten verse seventeen. You know. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So the more and more you listen and hear, that's that's gonna build your faith. That's why when you when when you came up here, you was like I was like, hey, what's your nationality? You're like, I'm an Israelite. You know what I'm saying? You said that thing in faith. You knew that thing because you've been watching. God said that faith come by you hearing his words. So it's good that you watching classes and stuff at the house. That's right. That's, that's going to build your faith. What I, what I have you holding? Oh, yeah. Let, let's, let's get the image of Christ. So this, so so you got to put this in your spirit. To, to um, so, so when you're talking to somebody else about this truth, you can, you can go in the Bible and show them for yourself. Because all men, we got to be teachers. 
It's gonna be different levels of our teaching, but we all gotta become teachers. Right. Read. Revelation chapter one, verse one. The go. revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. So God gave this to John to show unto the rest of the Israelites. We are his servants. Stuff that must surely come to pass. The word revelation, what's the root word in revelation? The root word, what's, what's uh, you, you know, uh, reveal, you know what it mean? To show. So this is the showing of Jesus Christ. He's showing, God showing us what Jesus Christ looked like because he knew later on that this image would come up. So he had to write it down in the Bible. He had to bear record of what Christ really looked like so we could go in this Bible, which is only written to the Israelites, and see what Christ looked like. That's right. Jump uh, to verse 10. Verse 10. And I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in a book. John wasn't sleep, he wasn't having a dream. God, Christ told him, whatever you see, write it down in a book. Jump down to verse 14. So we're gonna, we gonna see what he wrote down, read. Verse 14, his head and his hands were white like wool. So John turned around to see Christ, he was like, he got white woolly hair. You know, that's our people. We the ones with, with uh, wool texture hair. They look, look like a sheep, afro. You know what I'm saying, read. As white as snow. It was all white, read. And his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass. So Christ, he looked down to see Christ's feet. He had on sandals probably. He said it looked like fine brass. You know, brass is a, a shade of brown. Read. As if they burned in a furnace. He said they, the brown was so dark like it burned in the furnace. So he was a real dark-skinned brother. Read. And his voice as the sound of many waters. And Christ cried aloud. He had a very strong, loud voice. Read. I mean, uh, go to uh, Numbers 15. Cause, cause you know, Christ, he always talked to multitudes. When you read in the gospels, a lot of people was fo uh, following him. He teaching five, 10,000 at a time. So he had to talk real loud. So, you know, we don't, we don't, we ain't got the strength of our forefathers, but we diminish in each generation. So we got to come out here with a speaker or whatnot. But Lord will, we get the kingdom. We're going to get those spiritual bodies back. That's right. You ready? Romans chapter 15 verse 38 yeah. Speak unto the children of Israel well, That's you E, the children of Israel God says speak He told Moses to tell us this way back in the wilderness This is one of the commandments God gave us right? And bid them that they make them fringes in the border of their garments So God said command them that they make fringes in the borders of their garments So you see all these men up here that in the purple that's standing around you we got fringes on our garments because God commanded Moses to tell us this in the wilderness. Read. Through that third generation. So as long as we generating, as long as we having kids, we got to keep these commandments. We got to keep it, then we got to teach it to our children. Read. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. So God said we got to put a ribbon of blue on the fringe. Come on. And it shall be unto you for a fringe that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them. So God said the fringes is to remind us to remember all the commandments that God gave us and do them. You know, you know the definition of the word do? What, what, what it mean? To take action, to perform. Yeah. Right. So, so we got to take action in these commandments. So that's the way you're going to take action is uh, get fringes on your clothes. So uh, Hobby Lobby, Joann's, it's a it's a few stores in North Dallas. Uh, you said where? Michaels. They they sell them at Walmart. Yeah, Amazon. So so Royal. We got websites. So Royal. Um, it's it's it's, it's plenty of ways. You know what I'm saying? We'll we'll get you to us. We'll get you some some uh, points of contact to get you some fringes so you can so you can pull, perform that, take that action, and get the fringes on your clothes. Uh, before you leave here today, you know, so you got any questions though? Or anything you've been studying or reading? All right, so you know how to keep the Sabbath day. Yeah, you know you know how to keep it though. 
All right, let's, we're going to go over the Sabbath. We're going to go and get some scriptures. It's another commandment. Go and get some scriptures over the Sabbath day. So you can so you can uh, learn how to keep the Sabbath day holy. Yep. Read. That's right. Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. Yep. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. So God said we got to remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. He told us to remember because in slavery we will forget. Because they stripped us of our heritage, right? Read. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. First, he said, we got six days of labor and do everything we need to do. Do all our work in six days span. You know, Sunday the first day of the week. So then six day will be Friday. So we got to, we got from Sunday to Friday evening to do all our work. Read. But the seventh day is the seventh day of the Lord thy God. Friday evening when the sun go down, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta shut it down. We shouldn't be working, we shouldn't be buying, we shouldn't be selling. Read. In it, thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. So God is a similar to the creation. When God made the earth, he did it in six days. So he said, since he worked six days and rested on the seventh, he want us to rest on the seventh. Recharge. Um, get in the spirit, congregate with the brethren, and uh, recharge for their next work. Because cause we stayed in captivity. So in this last captivity, we got to rehearse the righteous acts to get ready for the kingdom. That's the only way we're going to get in. Those righteous acts are the commandments of God. What you got? Uh, give me uh, Exodus 30, 35 and 3. Because it said we couldn't buy, it said we couldn't uh, sell, it said we couldn't work. Let's see what else we can't do. Exodus chapter 35, verse 3. No. Ye shall kindle no fire throughout your habitation upon the Sabbath day. We, we, can't, we can't cook on the Sabbath either. So we got to eat uh, cereal, sandwiches. If you cook something, you got to cook it that uh, Friday eve before the sun go down. And then you got to eat it at room temperature or whatever. But we can't make no high food on the on the Sabbath day. He don't want us cooking on the Sabbath day either. You know what I'm saying? It's just it's just a few hours, one day. You know what I'm saying? So it's and it's uh, it's a lot of stuff you can eat: pasta, sandwiches, all type of stuff, man. Little little snacks. So the sun go down, and then you can get high food again. But these the commandments God gave us. We got to understand these the this the reason why we went into slavery because we stopped keeping the Sabbath. Give me uh Amos eight and five. Huh? He said how Moses parked the Red Sea? After, yeah. Right, because after after he parted the Red Sea, we was we was ruling. Uh Joshua, uh, after Moses died, Joshua went to land, conquered lands. Uh and we we started to, we got our land back. Right. The, the, even the first generation that came out, they they was uh they was talking about Egypt. They wanted to go back because it was so good in Egypt. Huh? You said we what? Oh uh, yeah, we was in the we was in the wilderness walking around for forty years. That first generation, they died out because they they, they they didn't believe. They didn't want to keep the commandments. They murmured. You know what I'm saying? That's that's the spirit that's that's on our people. We 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 had a small faith in the Most High God, even though He showed us great wonders in Egypt and killing the Egyptians, because they was the world power like the white man is today. That's why that's why uh, God letting the white man get so built up here in America, so everybody will feel like oh, can't nobody stop the white man. So when Christ come back, they gonna understand how powerful God is. That's right. Uh, yeah, read that. Amos chapter eight, verse five. Bring it up. Saying, When will the new moon be come that we may sell corn? And the Sabbath that we may set forth wheat, making the epoch small and the shekel great. So give me Deuteronomy 28, uh 40, 47. So so that that was the spirit on our people in the new moon and the Sabbath. We couldn't buy or sell. They was that's all they was thinking about, getting money. That's how we are today. Always thinking of a way to get money. But God set it up to where well, we ain't have to hustle like that. Because he gave us everything. Right. That's what we're working for now, coming back to these commandments so, so we can get that gift again. But he ain't gonna just hand it over to us this time. We gotta, we gotta actually perform or do the work for it. Read. 
Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 47. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. So that, that's what we didn't do. That's what you just seen in Amos 8, what our forefather was doing. Damn, when the Sabbath and the new moon gonna be over so I can go buy and sell, so I can make this money. God said, I gave you everything. He said, since we didn't serve the, the Most High God with joyfulness and gladness of heart, happy that, it's, that we got a Sabbath day to celebrate the rest, to uh, congregate and fellowship with our brothers, they take joy in that, what, what happened to us? Therefore, shalt thou serve thine enemy. He said, therefore, because of that, now you got to serve the people that hate you, your enemies. Right. Read. Which the Lord shall send against thee. And God sent them against us. God sent them against us. That's why we, that's why we, that's why we can't get out of, out of this oppression. That's why it's so hard for us. Because God sent them against us. Because you got to think about it. We have Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, Sojourner Truth, Harriet Tubman, uh, Nat Turner. All these great men and women rise up and try to save the so-called black people in America. The so-called Hispanic people. The so-called Native Americans. But we couldn't get out of that situation. No, because God sent them against us. You know how we gonna get out? Huh? But I, I'm saying, how, how you gonna come back though? We gotta keep the commandments. That's we right. got to, that's the only way. If we don't keep the commandments, we gonna forever be on the bottom. That's right. We will forever be on the bottom. Hold that, give me uh, Lamentations 2 and 14. Then give me uh, um, Baruch 4 and 1. Three. Lamentation chapter 2, verse 14. You know. The prophets have seen vain and foolish things for thee, and they have not discovered thy iniquity to turn away thy captivity. So the, the, the Sunday pastors, T.D. Jakes, Geno Jennings, all these Truffle Dollar, God said they, they ain't telling our, our people they ain't sin. That's going to turn away. They gonna turn, that's going to turn away our uh, captivity. Cause they, cause once again, money they getting paid, huh? Sign an O. Oh, they they just made an agreement, cause you know the the tithing money, yeah, they, they pretty much took an O, right? Exactly. So so the white man said, hey, when they tithe and offer, you keep that money, as long as you ain't teaching them right, teach our doctrine. Don't tell them that the children of Israel, don't teach them no commandments, and, and everything good. Y'all gonna get that money. So with, with our people having that greedy spirit on them, of course, they like, yeah, they like, for sure. I'll do that. I'll do that. I'm, I, I, I'll just teach them white man Jesus. I'll just teach them God love everybody. Um, we ain't got to keep the commandments. Because Creflo, he had a video, and he said it's, it's, a, it's a sin to keep the commandments. He said, he said when you keep the commandments, you sin because you don't believe in grace. That, that is straight foolishness. But we just read in the Bible, God said, it's gonna turn our captivity when we start keeping the commandments. And that ain't what, that's not what the white man wants, so that's not what they want. Read. Baruch chapter four, verse one. This is the book of the commandments of God and the law that endureth forever. All they that keep it shall come to light. So, so this is the book of the commandments of God and the law that endureth forever. So we know them false prophets. That Creflo Dollar is a liar. And the truth is not in him because he said, if you're keeping the commandments, you're in sin. But what did the Bible say? All they that keep it shall come to life, but such as leave it shall die. Proverbs uh, 21 and 16. So, so God said, everybody that's keeping the commandments, you're gonna live. You're gonna have eternal life. You're gonna live forever. But the, but the Israelites that depart from keeping my laws, they're gonna die. That's why we spiritually dead today as a people, because we don't got God's laws. Right. We don't we don't follow these commandments. Right, right. That's what I want. Yeah. Proverbs chapter twenty one, verse sixteen. You know? The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. So God said we spiritually dead. He said He said those Sunday churches that's the congregation of the dead. Um. Being on a block, that's the congregation of the dead. Being in this world, that's the congregation of the dead. Right. Anything affiliated with this world outside of God's commandments, we spiritually dead as a people. That's right. Revelations 18 and 4. We're spiritually dead. We're disconnected from God because he gave us law, statutes, and commandments. 
a covenant he only made with us. So when we go outside of that, anything else is dead. White man Jesus, dead. Islam, dead. Buddha, dead. All that stuff, that's dead to our people. Our only way that we're going to have life is uh, Jesus Christ. He, he said he is the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, you, know, you know what I want? Revelation chapter 18, verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. So, so to not receive the destruction that's coming to America, uh, Revelation 11. Not to receive the destruction that's coming to America, we gotta separate ourselves. We gotta, you, um, you got a wife, girlfriend, all right, when, when you get one, you got a t-shirt. Hey, you can't wear pants. You can't wear booty shorts. God gave you a modest dress code, skirts and dresses. That's the ways of America. Amelia Bloomer, uh, she 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 brought that doctrine forth in America that women can wear pants. Cause when when well, when people wear pants, um, what what does that signify in them? Their status in a relationship. Yeah, you the man or you the you the head. Cause cause if your girl punk you, they be like, ah, we see who wear the pants in that relationship. So that's a sign showing that that, that you are in charge. God said that it's. It's God, Christ, man, woman. So when your woman wearing pants, she out of order. She at, she is outside the order of God. Right. Yeah. Revelation chapter eleven, verse eight. Yeah. So remember, God said we got to come out of America, the society, in their in ways, come back to the laws of God. Because because when we in the ways of America or this society, we spiritually dead as a people. That's right. right? And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. Which is spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. God said we will be spiritually dead in a great city that's called Sodom and Egypt. It's called Sodom because you know what happened in Sodom and Gomorrah in the uh, scriptures. So Sodom was a city in the time of Abraham. You read about it in Genesis the 19th chapter. Um, some angels came with a uh, lot, Abraham nephew, and uh, it was all the. It was men in the city that tried to come and rape the angels. So that's homosexuality. That's against God. What just happened with Obama in America? He passed a law for homosexual marriage to get, um, to get passed. Also, Sodom, Sodom and Gomorrah got destroyed when they tried to rape the angels. You know how that happened? With fire. God rained fire down from heaven. And the Bible is prophesied that America will be destroyed with thermonuclear fire. That's right. So God said this place right here is spiritual Sodom because they push homosexuality and it's going to be destroyed with fire. That's right. It's called Sodom and what? And Egypt. And it's called Egypt because what happened to the Israelites in Egypt? We was enslaved. That's How we come to America? On slave ships. They colonized the natives. So we were spirit, the, the 12 tribes of Israel started as a nation in Egypt as slaves, and we're going to come out of this last captivity, spiritual Egypt, from slavery to the kingdom again. Right. So, so with Moses, that was a similar to what's going to happen in the last days. So God said, the, 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 the great city that we in is called what? Sodom and Egypt. Spiritual Sodom and Egypt. Right. Say, say what? Right, to, to to make it seem like the Bible is a lie. They built the canal to make it seem like uh, uh, they, they couldn't have walked from Egypt to Jerusalem because it's, it's a waterway in between it. But they built that in the uh, in the like 1800s. Yeah, they built that in the 1800s. That was not there in biblical times. That's, that's a man-made canal, right? Where also our Lord was crucified. So they crucified Christ. They crucified Christ here with this image. In the doctrine that they teach, because Christ taught the laws, he taught he taught God's laws, statutes, and commandments. But in America, Christianity, they teach the, the Trinity. That's not biblical. They teach we don't got to keep the commandments. They teach God love everybody, but ain't none of that stuff. Christ didn't teach none of that. Christ only dealt with the Israelites, the twelve tribes of the nation of Israel. Get that in uh, John eighteen and twenty. Bring it out. Bring it out. God only dealt with the world of Israel. He didn't deal with nobody else. But today they try to cling to our God. Why? Because they, they think they they think in doing that they're gonna get some refuge when Christ returns. 
But Christ is coming to pay back all the nations that hate his people. And we're going to get that next. Uh, Luke, Luke chapter 1. Read. John chapter 18, verse 20. Jesus answered him, I spake openly to the world. I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple, whether the Jews always refer. So the word to God, what he said, I spake openly to the world where the Jews were always at. So he said, the world is the Jews. That's right. right. Judah, Benjamin, Levi. The Jews and the remnant of the rest of those tribes. That's what that's what was in the land at that time. That's so right. God said, that's the world, the 12 tribes of Israel. Matter of fact, get that in uh, Wisdom of Solomon right quick, 18 and 24. Let's see what uh, our forefather Aaron, the, the, uh, the Levitical priest, let's see who he said the world was. Read. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 18, verse 24. No. For in the long garment was the whole world, and in the four rows of the stones was the glory of the Father's raven. So, so Solomon said in Aaron's garment was the whole world, and the four rows of stone. You know what he's talking about? Yeah, the, the ephod. So Aaron had the ephod, the breastplate. He had he had four he had four rows of stones. Each stone signified one of the tribes. That's so right. Read that again. For in the long garment was the whole world, and in the four rows of the stones was the glory of the Father's graven, and thy majesty upon the diadem of his head. So he said, in the four rows was, was the stones four times three. That's twelve. So he had the stones right here. The linen ephod, the breastplate, signifying the whole world, the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. That's right. Um, Luke 1. So let's see why Christ, who, did Christ come, is he coming back for all nations? Is he coming back to deal with all people? No, he's not. No, he is not. Let's see, let's see why Christ is coming back. Yep. Read. Luke chapter 1, verse 68. Bless be the Lord God of Israel. So he said, Bless be the Lord God of the Israelites. In the Bible, even when you see the other nations talking to us, they say your God or the God of Israel. They don't claim him as they God. They might say they, they, they say he the most high. He the, he the only true God, but they never claim him as theirs. He say he, they say that he's the God of Israel. So they even know in the scriptures. But today they try to adopt our culture. Read. For he has visited and redeemed his people. God said he visited and redeemed his people. How did God how, how did God visit and redeem his people in these last days? Right, through the prophets. What you see right now. Us, we and we're trying to get you to repent, learn, and come teach so you can help help God usher in his kingdom, redeem his people. Yes, Hold that, Isaiah 49 and 6. Bring it out, bring it out. So you can help God visit and redeem his people. Bring us back to the top where we're supposed to be, yes. from a lower state. Read. Isaiah chapter 49, verse 6. And he said, it is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserve of Israel. God said it's a light thing for us to be his servant and restore or redeem the house of Israel. To bring the Israelites back to the top. He said it's light. He said it's light for us to do this. Uh, um, 1 Corinthians 1. I think I think uh, 27, the foolishness, foolishness of preaching. He said this is he said it's light to do this. He said this is what we're doing right here, coming out teaching the world. He said, he said this foolishness. He said, the, he said, he said, with our foolishness, he's gonna confound the wise, the wisdom of this world. That's right. The wise things that men have set up and said uh, is above the knowledge of God. First Corinthians 1. 21. Yeah, yeah. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21. Bring it out. For after death, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom do not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. So God said, the one that believe and keep these commandments, he gonna save us by the foolishness of preaching. Why? Because we read it earlier in Romans 10. Faith come by hearing and hearing the word of God. When you heard this word, you was like, damn, I'm an Israelite. I gotta go home and keep watching. These brothers online, I'm gonna watch, I'm gonna study. You came out here today and seen us. 
So this this showing your faith. That's so right. Lord will, you gonna put the fringes on. Your faith gonna continue to grow. He's gonna continue to build. Lord will, one day you're gonna be up for teaching your people. That's and God right. said he's gonna turn his kingdom down by this right here. That's right. Because the people who God didn't didn't put, uh, put the spirit on to believe, read that, read that again from the top. But after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. Who got the wisdom of the world? So they don't know God, they don't see us as the prophets of God. They look at us like, man, them niggas crazy, man. They just out here on the, ain't nobody listening to them. They just out here on the corner uh, teaching foolishness. You didn't see that. God didn't put that on your spirit to see that. You like, no, it's what I gotta repeat. I gotta keep God's commandments. So when you doing that, God said, through us coming out here and teaching this word to his people, he gonna turn this kingdom down. That's right. his kingdom on the earth. He said he gonna do it by the foolishness of priests. That's this right. is foolishness to everybody else. But this is strength of God right here. That's right. Through, through the prophets of God. And, and Lord, will you worry those prophets. All you got to do is start keeping these commandments, God. And God going to give you the wisdom. That's God right. going to rain wisdom down on you. He'll give you the understanding of the scriptures. Bring it out. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are how our men repented at heart The scriptures is proof IUIC, we deliver the truth